Hey, what's up? It's good to see you again. You got to be tired doing all these interviews. <laughs> But anyway, we better we better jump in. I got four minutes. Yo, it's Jazzy Jazz at Jazz's place, and I am so excited because Lil Meech himself is in the building. Season three of BMF dropping March first, and it is fire. It is fire. You got mad conflict going on. You are going down to the A. Your brother's staying in the D, but you got some crews down there and not feeling your presence. Talk to me about that. Yes. Yeah, First time we're able to see the two brothers separated, you know, Meech is finally leaving his hometown, Detroit, where he grew up at. You know, they built, you know, everything from the ground up. You know, but he's now found Atlanta is the hub of the United States, you know, with all the freeways reaching all different parts of the country. You know, he's figured that Atlanta is the best spot to move for the business. And Meech is now moving down there with nobody itself. Mm. He has to meet a whole new crew. It's the first time he's been without his brother or his crew. And his brothers staying back with their crew in Detroit. But Meech is going to Atlanta meeting a whole another crew. All new faces, people that don't know him, don't trust him. You know, so it's crazy to see how he was so young and smart and fearless being able to, to navigate through Atlanta still get everything done you know, bring everybody together without violence and everybody's making money you know so that's that's what's up there, sure. there's a little violence in there there's some action like you almost get taken out right <laughs> oh, yeah, something, he's something. not trying to result he's not trying to result <laughs> Yeah, well, so, you yeah. know, that, and now your dad, I mean, sometimes we forget this is real life, you know, it's based on real life. And your dad was a unifier. And congratulations on how well you have channeled your father. What's he say, What's he telling you about your portrayal? He loves it. You know, he still, <laughs> has, still has his moments, you know, he's telling me, you know, what I can do better. But overall, he loves the show, loves the way that I'm body in his character. He loves the way that my cast mates are body in their characters. And he just can't wait for the new seasons, you know. He's he's blessed to be able to watch the show in the prison he's in. You know, him and his buddies, they all get together, you know, and Friday when the show comes back. They all so watch it. That's the biggest, biggest blessing. That's dope. Well, I know when we talked before, you talked about how close you were with your pops. And he's getting out in about three years. How is that going to feel to hug him Sooner than that. as a free Sooner man? Than that. Really? Sooner than that. Oh, that's what's yes. up. How is that going to feel when yes, you can hug him great. as a free man? What are you going to tell him? It's going to feel great. It's going to feel great. I always want my father, you know, home. You know, my, I used to visit him a lot more before I started acting. You know, now I've gotten a lot more busier. So it's hard to, you know, go down there and see him. But that's all I wanted. My father to come home and be able to, you know, help me, you know, through life and navigate, you know, through this experience, you know, and, and everything. So I can't wait till he comes home, man. You know, I, I want to be able to, you know, be there right with him. So, that is so beautiful. That is so yep. beautiful. And I got to ask this question for the ladies. And then if we have time, I want to ask you another question about the show. The ladies want to know, are you still boot up with Summer or can they slide in the DMs? <laughs> yeah, I love you as a couple, by the way. I do. I do. I'm here for it. <laughs> Thank you. Me and Summer have respect for each other, but you know, we're both doing our own thing right now. Oh, so the, so they can't slide in the DMs then. It's it's okay. <laughs> I don't check my DMs, Jasmine. I don't check my DMs. Man, I ain't got my DMs. Okay. So now you've got a lot of guest stars on the show. So dope. Two change, little baby, sweetie. What? What is your favorite storyline with 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 the with one of them that that you want that you can share, you know, a little bit of tea? Two change two change got two change was fun to work with, you know, um, because he, he actually knew my father. Um he oh. actually got to yeah, he, he actually got to um, be around my father, you know, before he got incarcerated. And, you know, they used to hang out in Atlanta and chill. 
you know, so it was fun being able to work with him. And little baby is my friend. You know, he's a couple of years older than me. He didn't, he wasn't old enough, you know, to be out with my pops, but, you know, he's an Atlanta native. You know, he's a young legend growing up in, you know, in the rap, rap game. So Bad. it was fun. It was fun being able to work with him also, you know. So it's definitely, we got a lot of new faces, uh, a lot of similar, you know, uh, familiar faces that people are going to be able to connect with and love. That's beautiful. So on your gram, you are rocking what you know, you know the the BMF bling for real. Now, is that real? Real diamonds? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh my yes, god! No, that, you know, me how much does that cost? No, me chain wear no fake. No, me chain wear no fake diamonds. Okay, now so that's gotta that had to cost at least a whole Swiss bank account. So thank you all for hanging out with your girl today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jasmine. Started. Jazzy Jazz. And if you're not watching BMF, you must be living under a rock somewhere. But right now, I have Ren King and I have a kind of a new character, right? Both of y'all are new characters in season three. Am I right? You're correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I am excited. Welcome, congratulations. And Frank Blaze Andreas, did I say everything right? Good. Okay, okay, props for me. So Ren, let's start with you. You play a groundbreaking character um, and you're straight G, but talk to me about the character that you play. Yes, so this character, Henrietta is a, literal trailblazer, a tornado of power, um, respect, um, nitty gritty, and is not afraid to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And one thing about <laughs> her, she's a chef. She will chef it up. And she's got a lot of tools in the kitchen and she's not afraid yeah. to use any of them. Yeah, so she's a baddie. So I guess back then she's she was referred to as she, right? But she's- yes. Because ba and back then, I think that's, you know, the times now, not so much. But, you know, mm -hmm. not as groundbreaking, still tra trailblazing. But back then, she was out. She had no problems with letting people know nope. who she was, right? So share right. a little bit about that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, Henriette is like the first character uh, in the BMF universe that is, specifically when it comes to gender, not entirely female, not entirely male, just this big boss energy that you have to respect. You don't right, have to know right. what's going on, but you have to respect it. And I think for this character, especially in this universe, in this time period, just like you said, there wasn't the terminology, this expansive terminology that included all these different sexualities and gender identities. Um, and so for her, she she still went by she, her, but the energy is different. And anybody you ask about Henry would say the same thing. I mean, even Terry's a little confused. So I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so does she struggle so I think with that? Yeah. Does she struggle with being gender fluid at all? Or is she like, yo, this is who I am. You can applaud or leave the room, bitches. You know, <laughs> I not to cut you off at all, <laughs> Jasmine. Um, I I think she doesn't know. She's very much stating her business um, and walks and approaches people in the same way. The way she, you know, talks to women she's interested in, the way she talks with the men who's in the game. Um, she's very comfortable with it. Um, but she knows that people, it doesn't click for them. She right. knows that people are, are a little behind when it comes to that. And she's not afraid to, you know, prove her point to a point, with a right. point, you right. know, or fire, whatever. So, <laughs> so now, is she part of T's crew in the D or or is she? She's her own, own thing. thing. She's doing her own she's, thing. She's her own thing. She, she, she's, she's from the Burbs. Okay. Henry comes from old money, so to oh, speak. Oh, okay. She comes from old money. She's a rich brat who does, who wants to take over the family business, but is a little messy. So um, she little, makes it everybody's problem. A little just bit. Just a little bit, just a- No, 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 a, a, a straight up tornado of mess. Absolutely. Okay, give us, a, yeah. give us a little example of that mess. Well, please, the, the list is too long. What I can say is <laughs> the reason she's wealthy is because of her dad as Blaze. Oh, that's you, know, you your daddy. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Of course okay. I am. Yes, I. Yeah, that, and that's where she gets her her passion from, her fire from. I mean, let's just think about the name Blaze. That right, right. You think of fire, right? And in fire, you have what 
Fire is bright, fire is fierce, and fire is dangerous. And daddy, how did daddy get the bank? Like, what did he do? Was he in the streets? Like, how did he, how did he get well, this bank? Interestingly enough, this is why I, I feel that the writers made this very uh, interesting, complex character because Blaze was formerly a detective in narcotics. What? what? Yes. So that's why I know the whole flow. I know the dance of that world. But now as a boss and a kingpin in the drug world, I have the connections, I know the politics, and I know the politicians. Woo! So I know how to navigate through that world with an ease and a, an effectiveness that speaks volumes. You know, I, that, I love the complexity of the characters in BMF. Fam, you gotta make sure you get it again, drop in March 1st. Y'all, thank you so much. Okay, okay, it's so great to see you all again. <laughs> Hi, Jasmine. Hey, <laughs> Nicole, you look fabulous, girl. Thank Last you. Time, I mean, you always look good, but you just really look great. So. <laughs> thank you, and ditto. I was like, who is this young girl trying to play a mother? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just dive right in. Like, Nicole, your character, I love your character. So complex. So many just contradictory, ambivalent feelings going on all the time on the daily. So you got this man that you love who cheated on you. So you're leaving him. You got two kids who you adore. Three, of course, all together, but two that you adore. And, but they're drug dealers and you're a religious woman. Talk to me about all these conflicts. Um, well, yeah, they do what they do, but a mother's love just, it never changes. It's, you know, and so I, you know, she prays for them all the time. And, um, you know, we've given them the best that we, that we could. And so, you know, I always say that they came from, uh, uh, a broken neighborhood, not a broken family. Mm. So, you know, we've given them as, as much as we could. So I still hope that they carry um, the love and the spirituality that we've given to them in everything that they do, regardless of what it is. Not that I condone that at all, but I, I think that is one of the strongest things about the show is that it's still about family no matter what. And even in the Black Mafia family, they have created a family um, uh, where they are you know, supportive and loyal to one another and take care of each other. And they learn that part at home. And I think a lot of that is the reason for the success of BMF was that there was the, you know, the ability of Big Meech to create unity and loyalty and a sense of family. So that, that's right on the money. But yeah. one thing that now in, I think it was season one, where you kind of, you know, took a little advantage of some of the goodies and the spoils that were coming your way in terms of that mortgage being paid and things like that. In season three, are we seeing more of that or less of that, would you say? Um, I think in season three, you're actually seeing more of uh, Lucille kind of finding herself and um, and just trying to focus on her and her life and, and taking herself back. You know, there were so many challenges between Charles and I for season two. Um, and then in the family in general, I, I think that Lucille is the one that really kind of takes a back seat to everyone and is in support of, of everyone and their stuff, including the boys who are now not at home anymore. And it's like, wow, everybody's kind of stepped away to do their own thing. This a moment for me to really see myself right. and take ownership of that. Yeah, because you just said deuces to your cheating husband and- Girl. Are you, you know, so many women are going to be able to relate to that and you're beginning to put yourself first a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you have this beautiful daughter over here played by Layla Pruitt, Nicole. Yeah. And um, you're kind of the last hope for any, you know, a legitimate career. But you have all these conflicts yourself and how you feel in terms of being, you know, not given the attention in the family that the boys are. Talk to me about that. I think um, the more that Nicole grows up, the less and less that she sort of expects that attention and the more that she's actually realized and uh, figured out sort of how to live 
um, under the radar of her family and, you know, sort of how you mean she's becoming a teenager now. And so um, often paralleled with her mom, uh, she's individualizing herself as well. She's sort of figuring herself out and making her own decisions as the family sort of um, spreads out and, and separates. Um, obviously, having the loyalty and the uh, caring for her family and for her brothers always in the back of her mind. But I think this season we see her grow individually a lot more. So what do you think is going to surprise us about Nicole in season three? I think socially, I think you'll see a bit of a surprise from Nicole this season. Ooh, uh, is it love? Is it love? <laughs> <laughs> and the people that she chooses to um, hang around and to spend her time with. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are definitely we are definitely going to stay tuned for that. Both y'all, congratulations on season three dropping March first. Can't wait to see it. Uh, it's amazing production, and and you all are such important parts of it. So thank you for hanging out. Hello. So we are chopping it up with Kelly Who and a new kind of a new character, Morgan Williams, right? So welcome. We can't wait to see what happens on the show. You all got a little conflict going on, Kelly. You, your character not happy right now because you got demoted. Talk to me about all that. Yeah, you know, Brian got me in trouble. You know, they partnered me up with a dirty cop and uh, he dragged me down with him. So, you know, I'm I'm starting off season three, just trying to dig not only myself, but um, uh, trying to save Kevin and uh, and Brian, you know, and um, and then they partner me up with with this newcomer, you know, who I have to train. <laughs> and you're not even on the drug task force anymore. You, you're doing all these lowly things. Exactly. And, and, and Morgan, your character is bougie. She's elitist. She didn't come from this wealthy background. Her dad's a councilman. So how are you? How are y'all two getting along? So we are, I think, I mean, initially she has to prove herself. There's a lot of proving there because Detective Jen Kelly's like, yeah, I'm not accepting you right now. <laughs> and that's, you know, she's coming off her bitterness with what happened prior and then, you know, not really uh, accepting Amberson. But, you know, I think she, she works really hard to prove herself. She does. And then they end up having like a really great bond and, you know, you're being able to see all these different layers that, she ends up coming out with when she feels comfortable in the end. So and doesn't she try to get you into doing some stuff that's a little sketchy because Kelly, your character is so devoted to trying to bring down BMF and you've been taken away from that. So you're kind of like, you know, on the low, low, can we work on this? Talk to me about that. Yeah. I think, you know, her whole focus, her, uh, you know, wanting to take BMF down, like you're saying, was taken away from her. And now she's in this job that she doesn't even want to be in doing, you know, with this brand new partner who she, uh, you know, this bougie girl who they've, <laughs> they've partnered her up with, who she's not even sure is going to be up to the task. And, so she's, you know, she's got to test her. She's got to make sure that she's going to have her back. And, um, and, you know, she, she actually ends up proving herself quite well, I should yeah. say. And, um, and yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of, of, of knocking of, of heads, but then there's this, you know, sisterhood, this bond that, mm. that forms, you know, you've got these two very powerful women who together, you know, are taking things down. They are taking guys down. <laughs> well, there's got to be a little bit of fireworks going on, though, between you two. So share a little bit of that with us and the, and kind of the, the scariest moment with BMF, with the work with BMF. Just a little tea. I know. I'm like, OK, which one can we say? But no, I mean, there's definitely some fireworks there. They go back and forth because she has to prove herself because she's bougie and wherever she comes from. But honestly, she's really, really passionate the same way that Detective Jen is. And so once Kelly's character notices that, then it's like we can, we really can do these unstoppable things and we can, you know, knock down some doors, no pun intended. Um, and, <laughs> and you actually knock down some doors up in the, <laughs> are we going to see you knocking doors down? Oh no! I don't know. <laughs> but we, we, when we finally get on the same same page, it's explosive. So, yes, I can't wait for everybody to see that. 
Well, listen, you all, I love powerful women. We are so here for that. So thank you so much and congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Jasmine Summers, Radio One. <laughs> Hi, Jasmine. Hey, so we'll just get started. So we are now chopping it up with Heather Zulke, right? Zulke. Mm -hmm. Zulke, Zulke. Welcome and congratulations. Season three of BMF is lit. So much drama, so much action. Tell us what to expect. You know, the streets, sports, and hip hop are colliding this season. You know, <laughs> it's an epic tale of two cities with Meech in Atlanta and T in Detroit. And it's great because it causes conflict for them. They're both making moves, doing things without each other, talking about it, and then there's consequences. And you're really going to find all of our, everyone in a season of reinvention. That's our theme in the writer's room. And that's what we wrote to, to push story forward. Everyone's reinventing themselves this year. Wow. So how are we seeing little Meech and his brother reinventing themselves? Like what transform transformation are we seeing there? Okay, so with Meech going to Atlanta, you know, he has a new crew and he realizes that he needs to do business in a different way because there's a lot of big players that are in Atlanta. And, and they, they are not wanting him there. They <laughs> Some do of not them. want him. <laughs> Some and, of them are. <laughs> um, and then T is trying to figure out how to become a leader in man without his brother in Detroit. He's having to make decisions against his new enemy right? And engage in that battle without engaging Meech and not having Meech's help. So and they both, both had very different approaches to the business that created, yeah. I mean, I think one thing that's so compelling about BMF is the conflict, right? Yes, and, yes. and the kind of the dichotomies that we see. So now we're seeing that also with his, the parents, his mom and his dad divorcing, she found out he was cheating. So what are what do you think we're going to see there? On the family stuff too, more reinvention, um, some heartbreaking things, some, uh, I guess there's some great shizzle moments that we're really excited about. You know, episode five is always our big turning point, our mid season. Oh, interesting. And there's a lot of great uh, things happening from a plot standpoint, both on the blood family and the street family. Well, you also have some amazing dope guest stars from Sweetie, Two Change, Little Baby. Um, just tell us a little bit about that. Jeez, give us a little yeah. tea about that. So, so Chains, you know, what's fun is everyone is playing characters that, that aren't like them. They're not playing artists or anything like that in the series. So we have some surprise twists with them. Uh, they're not who you think they are. Yeah. And it was really fun to Zoom and collaborate with Sweetie also, um, getting to take a little bit of Randy Huggins, the creator, his mom's backstory, a little bit of my backstory and creating this new strong female character. So I'm really excited for the world to, to meet Kia also. Well, thank you so much, Heather. I, I'm seeing that they're telling me we're out of time, but if we have one last question, how, what was your journey to get to BMF? Gosh, I've been in the business 24 years and I met Randy Huggins and 50 on the original power nine years ago. So nice. that's how we all got kind of came together in this. Yes. And, you know, of course, prayers up for Randy. I know he's going through some health challenges right now, but you are killing it, Heather. Congratulations. Thank and thank you. you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for the prayers. We appreciate it.